Hey everyone, this video is going to go over what to expect on your upcoming essay. So first of all, posted in the Buzz Agenda, you will find this practice essay that will give you an idea of what your essay uh, test is going to look like. So it's going to give you a sonnet. It's not going to be this sonnet. And then if you scroll down, it's going to have a pre-writing section where it tells you things that would be good to annotate. And then the instructions are listed here. So basically what your paper needs to consist of is it needs to have a thesis statement, which we'll talk about what that needs to entail. Uh, and that's, that's all I need you to do as far as the introduction goes. It's just a thesis statement. You don't need to write a full-blown introduction. And then two body paragraphs. So no conclusion is necessary as well unless you have time and would like to write one. So your first body paragraph is going to cover the octave, which is the first eight lines of your sonnet. And then the second body paragraph is going to cover the sestet, which is going to be the last six lines of your poem. Um, so if you take a look here, it tells you exactly what you need for the body paragraphs and what you need to cover. So again, body paragraph one, first eight lines, body paragraph two, last six lines. And you're also going to be addressing uh, the volta, which is the change or the turn. Remember, the volta comes after the first eight lines. So it starts with line nine and goes to line 14. So you want to look for, and I've talked about this in my other um, Zoom discussions with you, you want to look for either a change in tone or a change in subject matter once you get to that volta. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at an example. So here's an example. Uh, I, this is also attached in your Buzz Agenda, but you cannot see the notes that I put here, so I wanted to go over those with you. Again, if you attended our Zoom, you probably already heard me talking about this, so if you don't want to listen to this, feel free to not. Uh, but I wanted to just reiterate what you need to include in your essay. So the first thing you should include is your thesis statement. Now, your thesis can be up to two sentences, no more than two sentences. Most of the time we try to keep thesis statements to one sentence. However, with how I'm asking you to do this, what I was noticing is uh, my if I kept mine to one sentence, it would have been a long run on sentence and we don't want that either. So I want us to take a look here. So basically the first part of this thesis statement, it says in this poem, the speaker is conveying the importance of remembering injustice despite the pain and grief it will bring. All right. So your thesis needs to address what the overall meaning of the poem is. This is not a place to summarize what's happening in the poem. So like, for example, and by the way, this example essay is on Sonnet 1. Uh, in Sonnet 1, Marilyn Nelson talks throughout the poem about how she is going to build a wreath for Emmett Till to commemorate and remember him. And then she talks prior to that, she talks about how flowers have been used in the past and how they are significant when it comes to representation. So um, what I said in my thesis wasn't just a summary of that. It was the message she is trying to get across, which is that uh, it's important to remember injustice, but there is a lot of grief and then also pain that's associated with that. So again, uh, what I would do, the first part of your thesis statement is going to cover what the meaning of the poem is. The second part is going to address how the poet uh, accomplishes this meaning or gets across this meaning rather. So like for example, I say here, the poet creates this message through her use of illusions and flower symbolism. So you're going to state the main strategies that you're going to cover. I list two here, but then throughout I also talk about tone. So what I could have said was the poet creates this message through her use of tone, illusions, and flower symbolism. All right, so that's the first thing getting that thesis statement done. Then, if you remember, I talked about how your first body paragraph is going to address the first eight lines. So my topic sentence here is going to address the first eight lines. So I say the first eight lines of Sonnet 1 establish how flowers were used in the past to symbolize and convey emotions. Now, the big thing, and you'll see this in the instructions, is you want to make sure you're addressing the specific strategies. And I put those in purple here. You want to address the specific strategies the poet is using to arrive at that meaning that you stated in your thesis statement. So you need to come up with at least three strategies that are used in the poem you're given. So I'm going to go ahead and continue uh, taking a look at this first body paragraph. <clears throat> 
So it says, by the eighth line, it becomes clear that Nelson wants to create a wreath to commemorate Emmett Till's life and death. However, the first seven lines mention nothing about Emmett Till. In fact, the poet chooses to allude to Ophelia, a character from the play Hamlet whose life seems very different from Emmett's. In Hamlet, Ophelia goes mad after the man she loves kills her father. This illusion is meant to convey how powerful and overpowering grief can be. Nelson wants the reader to understand that remembering injustice, specifically the brutal murder of a 14-year-old boy, is a painful but necessary experience. So if I take a look at my notes here, um, what I did with this first example uh, when I mentioned the allusion to Ophelia is I state the strategy being used. So because she is referencing something outside of the text that's well known to people, um, again, that's going to be Ophelia, uh, in, which is a reference to a Shakespearean play Hamlet. Um, it's going to be an allusion. I explain the meaning of the allusion. So I talk about like what the illusion is. So I briefly like explain Ophelia's story. And then this is the most important part. The third thing I do here is I go on to explain how that then connects to the theme. And I do that here. So I said, Nelson wants the reader to understand that remembering injustice, specifically the brutal murder of a 14-year-old boy, is painful but necessary, which again ties to this idea that it's important to remember injustice despite the pain and grief. All right. So then I go on to my next strategy um, and I look at the tone. So I say this illusion helps the poet establish a reverent and somber tone which persists throughout the sonnet. This is important to note because other sonnets in Wreath for Emmett Till take on a multitude of tones. But Nelson begins her crown of sonnets with this poem to show she wants to prioritize honoring Emmett. As the reader will see in the sestet, honoring Emmett must include not only his innocence, but also the horrific way he died. Okay, so again, I did three things. I said what strategy she was using, which was tone. I talked about um, what the tone was, and then I explained how it tied to the theme. Now, if you're trying to think through what strategies you can reference, figurative language is a strategy. Um, we also have, obviously, illusions. Illusions, hint, will definitely be a strategy you're going to reference. And I'm going to, so like, for instance, you might not have known who Ophelia is because you've never read Hamlet. Um, in the back of the book and on the uh, presentation that I've shared with you that's been on the agenda, it gives sonnet notes in the back. I'm going to give that to you on the test. So it's going to explain what the illusions are. You're just going to need to uh, think of and explain how the poet uses those illusions to arrive at whatever you said the meaning was. Um, so again, strategies could be an illusion, it could be tone, it can be figurative language. Um, connotation and tone go together. So if you're talking about tone, that's the same thing as connotation in terms of how we're going to be using it in this essay. Uh, but any, basically any poetic strategy uh, that the poet decides to use to create the meaning. So like imagery would also work here. And so any of the strategies we've talked about or that you've learned about in middle school, feel free to apply it. Okay, second body paragraph, as we stated, is going to address uh, the last six lines. So how I would start this is I would start this paragraph by talking about the volta. And remember, the volta is the turn. So that comes after the first eight lines. So first eight lines I already talked about, I said those are focusing on how Marilyn Nelson is addressing how flowers used to have a meaning and also provides us that allusion to Ophelia. Then as I go to my next body paragraph, I'm going to address the Volta because it naturally acts as a transition because it talks about how there's a change from the first body paragraph or from, excuse me, from the octave, the first eight lines to the next six lines in the sonnet. So what I say here is after the Volta, the speaker shifts from discussing Ophelia and how flowers, re how flowers used to have a language in the past to discussing the flowers she will use for Emmett's wreath. So we know the last six lines focus specifically on Emmett Till and the wreath that the um, speaker of the poem is building for Emmett. 
So I say, while this speaker wants to remember Emmett's innocence, she is also concerned with seeking justice, remembering the horrific nature of Emmett's death, and grieving the loss of an innocent child. The speaker again stresses the idea of grief when she says, For grief, more than one, for one is not enough. Rue, you, Cyprus, forget me not, so if I could, I would. So it's a good idea to reference specific lines from your sonnet in your essay. The, the only thing that I would recommend is that if you do that, you want to specifically pick out and point out what is significant about those lines and how that helps, uh, helps the poet achieve the meaning that you stated in that thesis statement earlier stated. So, um, for example, here I quote this line and then I explain the significance of the line. You don't just want to dump that line and then not explain it. So what I say here is, and, Actually, quick pause before I get to that. I'm not going to be nitpicky about your citations, but if you want to uh, just include, like, Nelson is the poet's name, so you could just include N Nelson in parentheses at the end with a period. Um, and so how I explain that is I say these lines are significant because the poet is reiterating the importance of remembering while at the same time suggesting the desire to forget. This line also seems to suggest that the speaker will never stop grieving the death of Emmett Till. Like Ophelia, the speaker has been forever changed by her grief. While the speaker decides to use more than one flower to represent grief, she chooses the mandrake to symbolize the horror of Emmett's murder. So I'm talking about symbolism here, which could be another strategy you reference. But then you need to explain the symbolism. So I don't just say she uses flowers as symbols, boom! I then have to explain what those symbols are. So I talk a little bit more about mandrakes, and I stated mandrakes have a great deal of folklore associated with them. Some legends state that mandrakes would spring up from the blood of a person who was hanged. The roots of the mandrake also look like disfigured human bodies, and it was believed that they would let out bone-chilling scream when pulled out of the ground. All the previous flowers mentioned would make a beautiful wreath, but the speaker again is trying to reiterate the point that people cannot just overlook the brutal and horrific aspects of Emmett's life and death. These events must be prominent on the wreath, despite the fact that the wreath will no longer be made up of beautiful flowers. Whew, and my voice just cracked. Um, okay, so uh, again, I pulled out a strategy, which is the symbolism of the mandrake. I explain what the mandrake is, and then I talk about how um, the... Uh, inclusion of the mandrake is significant because like this idea of remembering Emmett Till and other injustices, yes, it's important to remember the significance of that person's life, to remember their innocence, but it's also important to keep in mind the tragedy, the horrific part of their death, um, which is included here. So that's, that's what we need to do for this essay. Again, a thesis statement two body paragraphs, and then you're going to focus on a specific sonnet that will be included in your agenda for today. Alrighty, if you have any questions, please reach out to me and ask them. I will see you soon.